The tour tees it up this week in America's capital for the AT&T National, where the world's number one plays host. PGA Tour rookie Ricky Barnes, coming off the strength of his runner-up finish at the U.S. Open, looks to be in good form after failing to crack the top 40 in his first 12 starts. 13-time PGA Tour champion Jim Furyk owns a pair of top three finishes at Congressional. And with six top tens on the season, he's in the hunt for his first victory in nearly two years. 2007 runner-up Steve Stricker has already claimed a victory in 2009 and is looking for another high finish this week. Defending champion Anthony Kim hopes to go back-to-back -back and hoist his first trophy of 09. But don't forget our host, Tiger Woods, who already owns a pair of victories on the season, is on the prowl once again. From Congressional Country Club, the AT&T National is next. The PGA Tour is proud to bring you the race for the 2009 FedEx Cup. and coverage of the 2009 AT&T National. Welcome to storied Congressional Country Club, the blue course, a fitting venue for this July 4th week celebration. Tournament host Tiger Woods and his tireless team christened just the third AT&T National. And let's take a look at our most up-to-date leaderboard brought to you by Titleist, the number one ball in golf. Look at that number by Anthony Kim, the defending champion, out with a course record 62, eight under par. That included a front nine, 29, his second nine of the day. And here's some highlights from this group that also included Davis Love the third. That's Furyk with a birdie at the first, and he would go on to shoot 66 today. A very steady competitor. Oh. Here's Anthony Kim, his second at number one. Started on the backside, turned in 33. And he was throwing darts on this entire side today, Nick. He was going to make that putt, and let's watch this for birdie of three. We well, were able to do that, Kelly. And the greens are soft, big, big heavy storm late last night, and I was trying to land here. Here's Kim for birdie at the fourth, and that will be two in a row, and he would take that momentum to the par four fifth. Here's his second shot. Yeah, big drive down this uh, slightly downhill right to left par four, and look at that for action. He would go on to make that putt for a guy who's been struggling with injuries and the state of his game. He's looking very comfortable in his title defense as we watch this, the longest putt he made today for birdie at seven. And then up ahead to the eighth, par four. Not the longest of holes out here. His second shot just continues to roll. Well, you see how he's used so many of the back slopes today. So, you know, when it firms up and you can't quite predict that bounce, that's when it becomes a major golf course. This is the birdie putt, and Anthony Kim would go on to shoot 29 on the front side. Tiger's really played quite well. One thing that he's struck with recent was driving the ball, but he has driven it beautifully today. Let's see if Tiger can. Will he hit it on the top side of the line or the low side? Yeah. The low side. How about six one putts <laughs> on this side, Nick? Yeah, that's impressive. He is, uh, he's inspired today. Bryce Mulder going well, minus five. And pops that one in the greens. Nearly perfect, that half an inch of rain overnight made things a little softer, but tons of birdies in his card. Uh, playing alongside Mike Weir is Hunter Mahan. Going up the hill. And of course, he's coming off that good form of last week. He always seems to play well at the Travelers, finished top five. We'll jump to 13. 
Par three, easiest par three at Congressional today. VJ uphill, slightly into the wind, front hole location. And that's the way to play it. Got four feet for birdie for VJ. Second all time on the money list. Dwight Yang. Back at three. Chance to move to minus three. Very solid 32nd in this FedEx Cup race. And VJ down the slope for birdie. It's back to level par for VJ. Course rating here 75.4, slope of 142. Let's go to Steve Elkington. Over at 15. And this is a chance to move within four of the lead, and he could use some points. 215th in the season long FedEx race. There you go. Elkington nice. grabbed his kids, Nick, and took a tour of the nation's capital the other night. Right. Took a night ride. Yeah, it's worth doing, isn't it? Got time to go to the museums and Smithsonian as well. God, that was. Come see all the space rockets. Everything lit up beautifully. 30 feet. BR, which way is it going? Yeah, it'll start off a little bit left to right at the hole, then straighten up at the end. Oh, like that. <laughs> Just like that. Uh -huh. I got a sneaky feeling he would like to, at worst, be tied with Mr. Kim. To 16. Elkington for birdie. There you go. That deserves a that a boy. Been a dismal year for Elk. In fact, he is yet to break the top 50. And we go back to the 15th. Sometimes it's good to look at your thumbnail, your right thumb, and just take it back quarter of an inch. Through quarter of an inch. That's how you hit it super soft. Man, is he seeing it today? Yeah, he's he's on. He's and he's going to play early tomorrow. As we catch up with Chez Revy. I sense it's going to be a full, oh, just a little, a little chip and a pop and an in. Oh, luck. That'll help you in this FedEx Cup race. He's just outside the top 144. On its way, Lucas Glover for birdie at 16. Perfect. At the 18th, Vaughn Taylor from off the green with his third shot. And it's been a rough day for him. 41 on the front nine. But a birdie at 15. And how about this at 18? So he makes a three. <laughs> Over at 16. Tiger. Oh, yeah. They're going in center cut, too. Tiger gets it to six under and goes on to par his way in, finishing with a six under, 64. Two back of our leader, Anthony Kim. The defending champion shot a course record 62 in the opening round and sits two clear of the field as we head to the second round. In a salute to our military and the wounded warriors who've sacrificed so much for this great nation, the AT&T National, hosted by Tiger Woods, honors these men and women. Playing host and competitor, Tiger Woods followed a first round 64 with a second round 66 to take the lead at 10 under. Tiger was out this morning, but his friends and part-time foes will pour on the pressure, like defending champion Anthony Kim coming off of a course record 62 yesterday. Tiger welcomes a strong field packed with American and international stars. Everyone blanketed in ideal scoring conditions. Round two highlights from this morning's action. Tiger, we pick him up on the tee at the par 3 13th. It's no cupcake. Almost 200 yards long. I welcome in Nick Faldo and let's take a look at this shot. Mm, yes, good afternoon golfers and you can see if you can use the slopes. To advantage because all the sides of these greens fall in like little like little saucers. Tiger fourth in the FedEx Cup points race. That number next to his name in green indicating he's inside the top 125. 
looking prime for these PGA Tour playoffs. And let's move ahead to the 15th, his second shot. Tiger at six under. Well, this is impressive. You wait, you see where this whole location is. Just a couple of yards. Massive bunker right there in front of him from out the semi. We'll give him that for a birdie. His second in three holes, and we will move up to the 17th, his third shot. And, you know, scrambling is all a major part of pro golf, and you've just got to believe you can get up and down from anywhere. It's a U.S. Open-style par here. Meaty little par putt, but Tiger takes care of business. And he would turn in 33, starting on the back nine today, turning at the first. That's not him. That's you there, Kelly, isn't it? <laughs> It's actually Tiger Woods. <laughs> and look at this shot. This is how you know it's Tiger right here. Yeah, is that the giveaway? Beautiful spinny shot. Tiger, one of the best in the business when it comes to controlling the spin of his golf ball and now the birdie putt. And he moves to nine under. Everyone taking note, whether they're on the golf course or warming up for their afternoon tee time. Here's his second at number eight. And another lovely little soft 60 degree. Little flip and a bit of zip on it. The old flip and zip. Flip and zip. That will work and very useful around here this weekend. You like what you've seen through two days here, don't oh, you, Nick? Oh, solid. I mean, he's basically um, he's inside that 15-foot circle. I always used to feel that was the mark for me. Let's take a look at our most up-to-date leaderboard. And it's going to be interesting to watch how Anthony Kim handles these moments this afternoon. We pick up second round coverage with Davis Love the third. This for his third straight birdie. That was a good looking stroke, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. You see the arms generate the power in the stroke, the arms and the shoulders. There's no hit at all in the hands. So smooth. And Davis goes to five under. And Jim Furyk. Oh, they're making this hole look easy, and it's not. So Furyk and Love both moved to five under par. Here's Ryan Moore at par three, 13th. Length of 195 today. Yesterday they had the tee up in the whole location in the front. Oh, Moore would easily brush that in for birdie and gets a four under. Back to 12, Jim Furyk ready for his second shot from just under 150 yards. Oh, and Furyk will have no problem picking up birdie at the 12th. And back at the 13th. There's Chris DeMarco. Helping win from the right. This player is trying to hit a power fade. The right hand hole location. Gorgeous shot by DeMarco. Always been the strength of his game, those middle irons. Clear in the way now for Jim Furyk with this short putt. He's getting some good looks here from his caddy, uh, Mike Fluff Cowan, who's a member here at Congressional. He knows the place pretty well. And Furyk at six under. Able to make a par there at number 11. And Birdie's on each end of it. Let's go over to 13. Marco to get inside the cut line for Birdie. Yeah. That's a bounce back. At the 16th, Ryan Moore for Birdie. Another Birdie. That's four on this side. Back over to the 13th. Now well, Davis has no excuses. He's had two balls from the same direction. He knows exactly the break, exactly the speed. Just plug it in and let it go. Like that. There you go. To 14, Jim Furyk, his third shot. Can he do it? I don't know, that'd be me. Chipping in. So a masterly chip for Furyk on 11 and an even better one there at 14. Back at 16. 
In DA points for birdie. Now in a tie for third. Jeff Maggard trying to make the cut at Congressional. Mm, this is what it's all about Friday afternoon. You always want to stick around and yes. It's a guy who had a chance to win the US Open here back in 1997 still plugging away at Congressional. After bogeys earlier at 11 and 14 Anthony Kim for birdie at 16. Yeah that's a good line you bet. And Kim gets one back and moves it to eight under. Very affable Boo Weekly. Minus three, that's good work. And he looks like he's going to have a little crack at this flag. <laughs> Boo's are alive again. Here's Johnson Wagner. At 16. Ah, center cut. And Wagner now inside the cut score at plus two with back to back birdies and three in his last five holes. Couples from 30 feet. Twenty six years ago a champion here. And he's fought back well today. A round of 72 yesterday four under for the round so far. Out at the 15th and this is the amateur Matt Hill an NCAA champion. And a sophomore at NC State and that is three consecutive birdies. He's the only amateur in the field this week. The lone wolf. And this is the weekly. No one's hit it closer than him. A mere two foot five inches. Best shot in 17 today. With 36 holes in the books, Tiger Woods is on top by one over Australia's Rod Pampling. Defending champion Anthony Kim shoots even par on the day and is two off the lead. And with two top three finishes at Congressional, Jim Furyk is fourth as we head to the third round. Congressional Country Club playing host for the third consecutive year to the AT&T National hosted by Tiger Woods. So much history on this playing field. A couple of U.S. Opens, a PGA Championship, always delivering great champions here. We have another leaderboard here stocked full of big names led by the host himself. Tiger Woods is the leader by one over Anthony Kim and Rod Pampling with Jim Furyk and a surging Michael Allen only two back and U.S. Open winner Lucas Glover is at minus six along with Boo Weekly and Ryuji Amada. Let's go to nine now we've got Lucas Glover uh, the U.S. Open champion this for a birdie the ninth hole the easiest hole ranked on the golf course today and that's the reason why they're making it from everywhere. This hole just over 600 yards. It's a good birdie going out. You see he made a early bogey and then backed up with three birdies. And away to go. And Rod Pampling after bogeying the last two holes. This up the hill and now down the hill. That's right in the middle, isn't it? Oh, and I believe that's only the second birdie on this sixth hole of the day. The second birdie today on the sixth hole and now Tiger Woods can knock in this three footer. They will be tied at nine under and David Faraday you're down there. But uh, might be the second birdie here ever. Yeah. How about this hole today from the, uh, really? where the tee is to the, the hole today is cut way in the back and it's actually five hundred and thirty five yards par four. And it's not a particularly easy fairway to hit either. And if you miss the fairway. You know the water hazard in front of the green. I mean, it's just a nightmare of a hole. And Tiger had a beautiful second shot. Just got caught out by a wind that's sort of swirling, and uh, right over the flagstick, right over the back. And this would be a pretty good up and down. You saw how delicately he had to play that uh, little chip. Yeah, it looked like he just kind of went right underneath it, but that's exactly where he had to hit it. This putt just over four feet. Should hook just a little. Oh, man, 
kind of looked like a little hop, just a little hop, and might have might have taken the break out of that one. Usually, if they hop, it will take the break, but the ball never did go left, and that is a bogey. So a bogey and a birdie. We got a flip flop here on the sixth hole. Let's go to eight. Anthony Kim, who opened here Thursday with 62, looking at birdie. Whoa. Yes. Wow, got away with it, Bobby, with the Aaron T shot. What a putt. That was some kind of putt. And we're going to find Cameron Beckman. Nice little birdie putt here, Cameron. Come on. Come on, talk to me. There you go, right in the middle. No thrills whatsoever. Just hearted that one. That's two in a row. Oh, and you birdie 11, too. Tiger two over for the day, trying to get one back right now. Yeah, as you're saying, the longest putt yesterday was six feet. Hold a a bunch on day one. Got it this time, his first birdie of the day. Boy, that was a positive looking stroke. The first part of that steeply downhill. Great putt. So for the time being, it's now three tied at the top. Got to go. Another two shots back before you find a group at seven. And now Pampling. This is for par. This will move. You can just see how it's slightly right higher in that right hand corner to left to right putt. One of the things he told us warming up before the round today is how playing with Tagger he admires the way he gets around a course and recovers from awkward situations avoids bad oh, numbers and he's just picked up one here that's a bad read he tried to hit that straight he had that um, the line on his ball dead straight and that one had to go it's maddening isn't it Megan five from 85 yards out that is a real bad one at the ninth Jim Furyk about six feet for birdie That's how you make the birdie on a par five right there. Not brute strength. Uh -uh. No weight lifting. Hit it in the fairway twice. Wedge it in there. Tap it in. Let's try 14. This was Michael Allen. Winner of the senior oh, PGA. Be interesting. Look at this for a break. <laughs> Four under for the day. Okay, now this will be a clumsy par here for Anthony Kim. Man, bogey this hole yesterday at all. I, I can't believe I cursed him. I started to say that and I went, what are you doing? Don't curse him. And I cursed him. I put the announcer's curse on him. Let's get to 16. Michael Allen. Hey, he's good at that putter right there. He's good at that putter. Over to Tiger Woods at the ninth, on its way for Eagle. Dead straight, David. It's going oh, right in the miss. Now that should be in the picture books right there. When you look under setting up for a putt and how you should set up with your feet, your knees, your hips, your shoulders, club face on a dead straight line to the middle of the hole, that was it. Let's go to 12. Anthony Kim, three shots back. Little sandwich, 98 yards after driver. Come on, come on. There, yeah, well, watch this one. Watch this one. Down that hill, down that hill. That's beautiful. And Anthony Kim is going to have that maybe three footer there for his birdie. Tiger Woods having trouble here at the 11th after hitting out of one bunker right into another. He now has this left for bogey. Double bogey at the 11th hole for Tiger Woods. He started the day one back. I went ahead, got to one back, got to three ahead, 
And now with that double bogey, he is tied again with Michael Allen at minus nine. At 12. And that is his 186th birdie of the year. That one on 12 right there, and that gets him to a tie, three-way tie now. Tiger Woods, Anthony Kim, and U.S. Senior PGA Champion Michael Allen. On the 16th hole, third shot, Cameron Beckman. Just short of the green over there in that long vegetative stuff. Oh, Clyke! Oh, look out, it got in the way, and I'll take three. As we go back out to the 14th. Wow, what are these guys got from the... Uh, Oh, 60 or 70 feet down the hill with about 8 feet or 10 feet of left to right break on it. From the northwest corner to the southeast corner of the green. Oh, hello, hello. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wow, you What a crazy game. Let's see if Anthony Kim can get the lead. Defending champion. Trying to wrestle away. Right there, pours it right in the middle. Anthony Kim now at 10 under, and he gets the lead by one. Up ahead, 17. U.S. Open champ, Lucas Glover. Can he make a birdie? Yes. Only four here so far today. Lucas Glover pours it in, and he moves within two. He's seven under par. This for an eagle. Cameron Beckman hold his chip for the only eagle of the day. Tiger had an eagle on nine. This has got a good line, ladies and gentlemen. This has got a good line. I just peeled to the right. Beautiful. And that will put Tiger Woods in a tie with Anthony Kim at 10 under par. Just no problem with these par fives. Anthony Kim and Tiger Woods both go on to par 17 and 18 and finish 54 holes tied for the lead. Winless on the PGA Tour, 50-year-old Michael Allen charges up the leaderboard and sits one back. Jim Furyk is in the hunt, as well as U.S. Open champion Lucas Glover. The final round is next. Final round is underway here at the AT&T National. Anthony Kim and Tiger Woods paired together. Sharing the lead coming in. They meet on the first tee. This is the first time they've ever been paired together. And Kim with a wedge to the first green and he pulls it back for a tap in birdie. The world's number one with one player that minifigure may be the heir apparent down the road. Anthony Kim with that birdie at the first is the leader by one over Tiger with Michael Allen and Cameron Beckman two behind. And Hunter Mahan for the third straight week in contention. U.S. Open Travelers last week. Yeah, he striped a nice one. Tenth is uh, three ducks in a row. 197. Sorry, 222. That brings Hunter Mahan to minus eight. This is the fifth green. Cameron Beckman. Whoa, after a wonderful bunker shot, gets the dreaded lip out. They're in the same group, Michael Allen. And that was a tentative looking stroke there. Well, the sixth hole is a par four, and this is his fourth shot. And you can see it's a pretty long swing, so we're not doing too good here for Jim Furyk. <gasps> no, 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 no. Oh, Furyk goes on to collect a triple bogey here at the sixth and drops to four under. Meanwhile, back at the fifth, Anthony Kim to save par. He hasn't missed any in this range so far this week. Oh. Until now, I'm and actually ooh. seeing quite a lot in the next one. Ooh, 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 ooh. But that's what I noticed. You know, the runoffs, the flags just keep going. You know, the run, the side of the green just keeps going, doesn't it, David? There's, 
the, the, the edge of the green, considering it's only 15 feet from that hole, is at least a foot below the cup. Yeah, yeah. he needed to make his mistake on his approach putt yeah. down to this position in the first place. Well, you saw him mouth as kind of a wow. He couldn't believe he could leave that uh, first one short. Now he's got to take his time, go through his normal routine. Uh, safely in, but it'll be a bogey for Anthony Kim, so he gives back the birdie he made at one. All caused by an errant tee shot. This is going to be very interesting. Let's go to 12. Hunter Mahan now for his birdie on this dog leg to the left, par four. Excellent hole today, cut way in the back left portion of the green, and Hunter is going along and nicely. He is now nine under, only one back. Back over at the sixth. You'll take this, wouldn't you? About a four foot par putt in this hole? I sure would, yeah, but you can't pull it like that. Cameron Beckman now sliding with that bogey. He'll be back to eight under par, two shots back. You see Tiger walking back there in the top left of your screen. Let's go to 13. And this is Hunter Mahan for birdie, a long one, sweeping left to right. And Hunter Mahan moves to 10 under par. Unbelievable stuff for the young fellow. He played well last week in Hartford. And he is pouring him in today. Look at that. Three birdies in the first four holes of the second nine. OK, this is the seventh today. They've moved the tee up because it's a very tough hole location. Just an eight iron for Cameron Beckman. Front left hole location. Yes. Just over the front. It's on three, Ian. Oh. <laughs> that actually, he landed it right on yeah. the little upslope there. There's not much landing area, that's for sure. To the sixth, where Tiger Woods is still looking for his first birdie of the day. The last putt he's made over 10 feet was in the ninth hole yesterday for an eagle. Until that one right there. Hello, Anthony. And we trouble off the tee. Slowly, methodically, precision like. They'll cut you up. You see, Anthony has a little problem with this hole and takes it right in there underneath the hole. So we can have a good shot uphill at a birdie putt. You know, it takes his chances when he when he can, when he has to. Let's go to seven. And Cameron Beckman has this for birdie. That's a little better. Missed a couple of short ones in the last two holes, but that was a beauty. Back to even par for the round, and lots of kids and lots of service men and women in these huge crowds today because they can all come in for free. A great initiative from Tiger and his people. Great to see. Greg McLaughlin, the... Uh, Tournament director here and the people from AT&T, Brian Fitzgerald as well. Nine feet, seven inches. He leads the field and puts inside of 10 feet. Oh, and that's why right there. What a four. That, that's a response right there. He couldn't have let that one go. Could not have let that one go. That's how you do it right there. Good work, guys. Go back to nine. Get a par five. We've got the 18-year-old Danny Lee. Hold today, cut just on the front of the screen. You see that giant slope can take it all the way down if you. Oh, there you go. There you go. They just crank left right in the middle of the hole. And we've got uh, three circles, two squares. That's uh, under par. All right, fresh off the birdie at six, Tiger at 70. And again with the eight iron, 145 yards, right over the top of it. Get some spin down that hill. That is slippery down there. Oh, that's a great shot. Well thought out. Oh, he's going to love that one. 14 now. And for par. So Hunter Mayhem now two behind Tiger, and it could be three with Tiger short distance away from birdie. 
up some momentum for now. Back to seven. Tiger has a great opportunity here to take a two shot advantage over Anthony Kim. And with Anthony Kim about four feet away for his par putt, could be a two shot swing on the one hole. Jimmy, you mentioned it early in the show how good a closing percentage Tiger Woods has. He's about a 950. Only three times in 48 tries from the lead after three rounds, he hasn't won. Just a phenomenal record. Phil Mickelson also a good closer. He's uh, about 750. Much better speed. Well read. Tiger Woods 12 under. Birdie, birdie at six and seven. <laughs> Two beautifully played short irons there. And Hunter Mahan's second shot. It's flagged. It's a pitching wedge. And it's a virtual certainty. It'll be a birdie to get him back the bogey he made at 14. So Hunter Mahan inside of two feet. Anthony Kim short putt to save par at the eighth. Oh, look at Anthony Kim. Hmm. Three putt, a second three putt we've seen now out of Kim. And he has fallen all the way three back. There's the Tiger Factor. His first day of feeling it, Sunday afternoon with Tiger. It's good a nine. We're going to find Michael Allen now, third shot on this par five, just under 600 yards today. That should be just a firm nine iron. Get it past the hole. You can't get it spinning too much. It'll come right back off the green on you. Hold on, hold on. Oh, that's not. Oh, go in, go in, go in. <laughs> First eagle of the day, Michael Allen. <laughs> Give me some of that. Up to 15. And Hunter Mahan takes advantage of a wonderful second shot into the 15th hole. Four birdies, one bogey on the second nine. And he is now tied with Anthony Kim. At the ninth, Kim with a birdie try to climb back within two of Tiger Woods. Just about a must putt, isn't it, David? Just about? I think at this stage, yeah. Now it's going to go left hard, hard, hard. There it is, right in the middle. Beautiful boy. And he can make some of those must putts. We've seen it before. That'll get him going for the back nine. How about that guy for four on six yeah. and a four on nine from where he was? He's fighting it. He's fighting it, but he's hanging in there. And that's, you know, you don't, don't have your A game every, uh, every day out here. This putt is extremely quick and a lot of left to right. When you look at it, Finchie, it looks like it's about a ball outside left edge with the speed of the greens. It's probably a foot and a half. Exactly right. Everyone's knocked it by here. That's good looking. Hunter Mahan moves to 11 under. Man, is he playing well. He told me last week he was in great form. Looking forward to the rest of the FedEx Cup season. Swinging the club beautifully, and as always, just a brilliant putter. Look at this. Releases the club nicely, stays still. And another good putt today there at 17 for Hunter Mahan. If he can hit a good drive down 18, over to 10 now. And now we've got the birdie putt attempt by Tiger. Now maybe a little right to left and slow up and over the slope. Oh, look out. Oh. Just from Hunter Mayhem. Might have been thinking from the other side of the golf course. That is some two. As I said, only two birdies so far. And Tiger makes the longest putt by probably double the distance of anybody else. Hunter Mayhem, huge putt for birdie for 62. Oh, he slammed. Oh. My goodness. Hunter Mayhem posts 12 under and ties the congressional course record. 
Well, on a Sunday afternoon with these hole locations, that is a, oh, I've got to say, shot or two, two shots better than Anthony Kim's 62 on, on Thursday. Wow, yeah, serious smile. He cannot believe how he could finish that off. After finding the water off the tee, Woods now has this left for bogey at 11. Aiming just left center, so and just shot. curls in on the right-hand side. Well, that's why he's world's number one. In a difficult situation, he makes the best of it. But he plays the 11th hole in five over for the week. Whew, he'd have a bunch of lead without that hole having to be played. Now Bryce Mulder here at 15. Important for him now. If he if he can finish twenty thousand dollars ahead of roughly twenty thousand ahead of Ricky Barnes, he will get an exemption into the British Open off of a special money list for six tournaments. That ends today, and he looks like he's going to do it at minus nine, sole possession of fourth place. Hunter is going to go now. Uh, he's not going to watch this putt. He's going to go hit some balls and get it ready. Sign a few autographs. Tuck in his shirt there. Do you think you'd tuck his shirt in for a player? Uh, you would have to, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think it's tall policy. There it is, just about 20 feet. Uh oh. Camera, something right behind. Yeah, there's just that's that. No, that's the classic uh, sort of marshal mistake. Unfortunately, you'll get that every now and then, where just as the, the player gets ready, the marshal put his hands up or wave a sign, like "quiet, please." And meanwhile, no one's saying anything. <laughs> Everybody's looking at everybody else, aren't they? That's right. Those cameras are right on his line. These, are, I mean, they're all volunteers. They all and they do a great job. It's just you know when somebody happens to be right on the through line like that, you just don't need the. Uh, gesticulations at the last minute. How oh, you got this pot, David? You know, I am uh, far enough back and you've been there for long enough. I figure that uh, you would know. Well, if, if anything, I, you know, it looks right to left. Very good. Just outside, I'm, I'm guessing. A couple inches. Pretty flat. For the lead. Just about to say, these are the ones he usually makes. But with no fist pump. Honest. It, just expected to do that on this 16th hole, the par five. That's his fourth pretty. Playing this hole four times. There you see, one hour, 11 minutes, hanging around, having some, having some lunch, watching our telecast. Let's have a quick glance down 18. It's, it's really important to turn it. If you, I mean, Tiger's going to go with three wood just to work it around the corner. I think he hit it 310 yesterday, but it's, the green is quite a, a long way, a good 30, 40 feet below the, uh, the fairway level. That's been causing a lot of problems, and obviously this whole location, that back left corner, you know, very interesting to see. Well, start with this one. This one can pretty much... Yeah, that's yeah. sweet. Sweet as a nut. That's just about going to leave, you know, just to wedge something. Mm -hmm. Here, play out a little right. Just needing a little four to lock it up. That's still uh... and Hunter's uh, over here real quick. leaving over to uh, watch Tiger play the last hole. Might hit a few putts on the putting green, a few chips around the chipping area there, just above 18. And great to see signing a few autographs. We've come to the 72nd hole. Just a magnificent throng waiting here to see how it all finishes. Tiger just needing par for victory. Be his third victory of the year if he can complete the deal. Well, Tiger could land it just on that ridge you see disappearing there in the green. I think he'll make that his priority. If it pops over, he'll take that one as you look down on that green TV tower back of the green. That's exactly the line, and he's got nine iron nick, a club he can go ahead and hammer. Yeah, that, I think that's the play. 
aim. I think they've, they've worked out that yardage, top of that hill. Hit it onto that. If it goes over, fantastic. If it doesn't, he's fine. Not even looking That's at it. <laughs> just on a perfect oh, line. There it is. There's the kick. Beautifully judged. Landing the ball literally on the number that they're, they're demanding. Well, that's certainly a strong way to finish. Anthony Kim stepped back. Gave the stage to the host and the man who's the certain victor. Talked about how much his father's on his mind this week. His father, of course, passing away May 3rd, 2006. Earl, 20 years serving his country in the military, two tours of duty in Vietnam, retired as a lieutenant colonel. Look at this coming down. Look at the muscles. Look at the tension in his face as well. But that was a pure shot. Powering through. Visualizing that finishing position. That's what Tiger works on. He has like three different finishes the high one, the medium, the low. All to create the shot he demands. Such a different kind of um, storyline here for the last hour and a half to think that when Hunter hold that putt on the last green. Remember Tiger was playing 11 mm. and was on the front of the yeah, 11th green in three. It could have very easily been a six which would have meant Mahan would lead by one. But somehow he got down in two. Then he had to go at it the rest of the way knowing that that you know, 12 under total 268 is posted. Yeah. We 11 was the only one put himself under pressure 12 hit in the bunker got up and down and since then it's been very pretty much clinical hasn't it well 13 he that ball came up short on the par three and had to hold a good size so yeah, there. yeah, yeah a little bit. Footer. but the shot was not much more than you know 25 feet off line at mm. 13 even though it grabbed in the in the in the fringe and stayed there so this has been I, I would call that I think it's a good word clinical performance from Tiger he's pieced it all together Kim is it's not going to matter too much position wise because he's got yeah. a shot two shots clear of Mulder coming here. But Anthony will know all about this day. You know put himself in through the ring a little bit. It's almost guaranteed though isn't it that that first time you're going to have yeah. that pairing is going to be something like this. Well you've got to deal with the aura of Tiger you know of watching him perform you've got his little media circus he brings with him now look at this this is interesting that his wins this year and I thought maybe Kim yeah. would finish but it's going to be his third win of the year providing he doesn't suddenly <laughs> give us a three putt here and that would mean all three wins this year uh, arrive in his last tournament before a major well, that's his schedule isn't it? He's, mm -hmm. he plays that takes a week off he's going to head to a to Turnbury on uh, Saturday, I believe. Obviously, flying privately over there. Hasn't played. I'm surprised he's not going in a couple of days earlier because Lynx golf is always, you know, it's fun to just play practice rounds. If the wind changes, you've got something to contend with every day. But Tiger, obviously, extremely comfortable with his game right now. Put a coin on that. 
Let Anthony Kim finish. Hunter Mahan signs a few more, and he will be the runner-up. And to think that Anthony Kim still hasn't beaten Tiger in a stroke play competition now in 17 tournaments, both competed. Man, there's always a problem to that, Jim, because Tiger's probably won 12 of them. <laughs> you know, it doesn't give you much opportunity. Kidding. You know, and he's been, and this is what his, this is the 18th straight week of finishing in the top 10. Obviously, he enjoys trading records with his good friend uh, Roger Federer. Yeah, Going to win on the same day again. Oh. Yeah, this is a day he'll remember. He'll sense, wow, my body felt different, my mind, my thinking, everything was mm -hmm. different today. I wonder why. Everything but left, too, and that's a sign of a little bit of nerve. This too, actually will be probably very good for Anthony Kim because he's played all these years on pure talent. And now he realizes, wow, I've got to just step up on a few areas to uh, take this man on. This won't take long. It's Tiger's tournament. Host and winner. Tournament host Tiger Woods claims his third PGA Tour victory of the season and 68th of his career. The world's number one fires a tournament record total of 267, capturing his 25th different PGA Tour title. Woods also grabs the number one spot in the FedEx Cup standings. This concludes this week's race for the FedEx Cup and the PGA Tour's coverage of the 2009 AT&T National from Congressional Country Club in Bethesda, Maryland.